I was having a conversation with one of you guys on my um, submission and action video, I think it was, where I share how, by God's grace alone, I was able to joyfully submit to my husband's purchase of a big gift that he brought home for the family. It was a $125 trampoline without talking about it first and how it, you know, I could have gone two ways, either been really frustrated and upset and bitter that he didn't return it or been satisfied with that he heard my mind, heard my thoughts, and then joyfully submit to whatever decision he made. And that is the route I took only by God's grace. <laughs> Um, and the conversation that I was having in the comments section was, um, someone was asking, if you marry the right person? They were asking, shouldn't it be easy to submit, um, if you marry the right person? Shouldn't it just come naturally? And we were talking about, my reply to her was, no, because submission is, um, the curse. It's part of the curse. When Adam and Eve sinned, um, and disobeyed the Lord, eating of the fruit, believing Satan instead of God, um... He cursed the woman in wanting power over her husband. I wish I can remember the correct wording right now. Desiring her husband. And if you research the the original language and all of that, the literal meaning is wanting to control, wanting to have dominion over. So the curse is that for us women. Like we want to control our husbands. And, you know, sometimes are harder than others. Some moments are harder than other moments, depending on how badly we want something. And if it's, you know, the opposite of what we want that they want. And, um, you know, through the years it might be easier, but it's always going to be a struggle. It's always going to be a, a problem because it is the curse. It's not like it's the curse until you conquer it. No, it's the curse. It's the result of the fall of man. So we will always battle submitting. And so, that's why, like, I always say, like, if you're not fighting submission, then you're probably not doing a good job at submitting because it's fighting. It takes daily fighting. Just like if you're not fighting sin, then you're probably living in sin because if you're not fighting it, you're going to totally fall into it, you know? So if you're not fighting submission, you're going to totally fall into lack of submission because it's just the natural course we take. Um, so with that said, today... I had a situation and I was like, oh, I'm going to make a video on this. This will be a submission failure video. Um, so we're at church. I Sunday school is back in session, so we have to get up earlier, get ready and there sooner. Um, and so I kind of overslept. I slept till 720. So the kids were still sleeping. So I got up, I got dressed, I ironed their clothes, and I started getting my makeup on. And while I was getting my makeup on, they woke up. So as soon as I was done... I dressed them, we headed to the kitchen, I started making breakfast, and at the same time I was preparing a chicken to put in the crock pot so that when we got home the chicken would be ready and then we could just make sides when we got home. So I had lunch ready, I had breakfast ready, everybody's ready, we ate, cleaned up, went to church. As soon as we get to church, we have Sunday school, and I sat with my husband, it was a very sweet time because the kids are not there. <laughs> So we can just like focus on each other. We hold hands. We're listening. We look at each other. We laugh. Whatever. It's like nice time together among adults and coffee. And um, then picked up the kids from nursery or from Sunday school. And then br I brought them into the sanctuary. And as I'm approaching where we're sitting, my husband's standing talking to a guy, a newer member in my husband's age group, but he's single and uh, no kids or anything. So he's, you know, older and single still. And so he's been befriending a lot of the younger guys, but he wants to hang out with some of the older men. Um, just because, you know, it, men mentally it's just different. And so as I'm approaching, I'm like, Hey, 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 whatever. And my husband looks at me and he's like, Hey, is there anything going on after, after church? Cause Kyle and I want to have lunch. And I was, I can, I, my face was like, because this weekend is Labor Day weekend and we are pressure washing our deck, my mom's deck, our entire outside of our house, the gutters, and trimming the bushes. And the majority of that is my husband doing it because it's there's only one pressure washer, you know. So I was like, no, I have lunch ready for us and we're working in the house. That's all that's going on. So yeah, that's great. And then we sat down and I'm like disappointed, dissatisfied. I don't want him to do that. 
today is not the day. Poor planning. Why wouldn't he think of this? You know, that's not the point. The point is not whether he should have checked with me first or whether he should have thought about this and this and this. That's not the point. The point is, how am I going to handle my actions now that will glorify God? It's not the point about what my husband did or didn't or should have or shouldn't have, whatever. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't sin in any way. Is there a better route he could have taken? Maybe, maybe not. Not the point, because that's where otherwise would love to just tent out and camp out on. That's not the point. Our actions are the point. So he sat down and he's like, is that okay? And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. And then I made a big mistake. I thought out loud. I said, oh, I wouldn't have defrosted the chicken, you know? And how's that supposed to make him feel? Happy that he's going to lunch with a friend? Relieved that I am with him, support him, I'm okay with it? Probably not. Probably guilty, condemned. You should have thought things through better. You know, that's not what I want my husband to feel. So I screwed up. And right, you know, like after that, he has to go on stage to play music. So singing, worshiping. Then when he comes down, we take the little one back to his nursery class. And as we were walking back, I told my husband, I am sorry. I messed up when I said the chicken comment. Forgive me. I'm glad you're going. Please enjoy yourself. And so I made it right. And thankfully, my wonderful husband is totally fine about it. Forgives me. Knows that I'm not perfect. I'm going to mess up. Is glad that I see when I mess up and can confess it. And so everything's fine. But I shouldn't have said that. I should have just been all right with it. First of all, the Lord is sovereign over all things. And so God is in control. Even over that situation, God is who I need to trust in. It's fine. There's nothing that alone should give me relief beyond measure. Oh, God's got it. Sure, baby, have fun, you know? And then trusting my husband's judgment. He knows the work that has to be done at home. He's not going to spend five hours out. They've been talking about this for weeks and now they're finally doing it. Let it happen, you know? Um, so just wanted to share that with you guys. I totally failed by speaking out loud and not being encouraging and supportive. Um, and maybe my actions didn't show lack of submission, but my feelings totally did. Because what lack of submission is wanting to have your way and your method and your approach and your what you want your husband to do what I wanted him to do was say no come home eat with us and get to work that's what I wanted him to do he took a different course and that being okay with that is submitting and following in a way that honors and glorifies God not being okay with that is a normal battle but we definitely want to try to fight that within so that we don't bleh, on our husbands and when we do it's good and right and okay to confess it to our husbands, to the Lord, and to just, you know, they're going to be gracious with us because we're not perfect. You know, we're fighting the curse. <laughs> the curse is inevitable. We're never going to conquer it. And they're aware of that. And if they're not, they should be. Um, so I thought and hoped that would be encouraging to you guys. Have a wonderful Labor Day weekend.